Well, welcome to today's video. I invite you to follow along as I try and DIY my own hunting saddle. I'm gonna try and sew a hunting saddle from scratch. I want it to be safe, uh, but yet very budget friendly. Hunting saddles have been around for many, many years, decades I should say, but recently their popularity has just gone through the roof. Along with that popularity, many companies now commercially manufacture these tree saddles, uh, but along with that comes a price tag, and some of those can be rather pricey. So in today's video, I'm gonna try and sew my own saddle. Spoiler alert, I'm hanging at 20 feet off the ground now, uh, but follow along and see how I did it. So before we get started, I would be remiss if I didn't give some sort of disclaimer. Here is my disclaimer. Do not try this at home. Do not do what I am doing uh, unless you're 100% uh, confident and you are assuming 100% of the risk. I am by no means a professional uh, and this is not gonna be a step-for-step -step process. I'm simply gonna show you what I did. I'm assuming all the risk. Uh, I have to be confident in the products I'm using and in the way I'm using them. Uh, so please use extreme caution and if you choose to do any of this or uh, use some of my ideas to come up with your own ideas, uh, please safety first and you have to assume all the risk. So here's something I'm willing to bet you never thought you'd see on the Hunting Farmer channel. A sewing machine. I am planning to use a sewing machine and sew myself a hunting saddle. It's going to be a DIY saddle. Uh, truth be told, I've never physically held a real hunting saddle uh, commercially made. I've never seen one in person. I've simply done my research, uh, tried to look at as many videos as I could on saddles to try and get uh, the right size. I'm going to be taking some fabric uh, that I bought here at the local uh, fabric store. Uh, it's a little bit of a canvas type uh, fabric, uh, but yet it's not very noisy. It has a little bit of noise, but I wanted something that was going to be relatively quiet. Uh, I'm going to couple that with a rock climbing harness, one of the lightest rock climbing harnesses that I could find. Uh, this is actually a Black Diamond BOD or a Black Diamond BOD uh, harness. Uh, this is ultimately going to be my safety, uh, but then I'm going to be using uh, some tubular webbing along with this canvas to make the actual saddle. Uh, and then I'm going to attach that to uh, this rock climbing harness. When I'm all done, hopefully I'll have a system that's safe, uh, easy to, to use. Uh, yet very inexpensive. So follow along, we'll see how this turns out. So as I just mentioned, one of the first steps is to pick out a fabric. Uh, I felt a little bit like a fish out of water going into the fabric store, trying to pick out some fabric. Uh, felt like everybody was kind of looking at me, wondering what I'm doing there. I was originally looking for something maybe camo. I ended up picking out uh, this canvas type uh, material. It's pretty lightweight, yet it feels like it has some good strength. Uh, it's not terrible noisy and I think it's going to work just well for what I'm going to be making it. Uh, I am not going to be using this as a load bearing. It's not going to have to hold my weight. I'm not concerned with it uh, holding all my weight. Uh, that's where this tubular webbing comes in. Uh, I'm going to show you what I have in mind uh, with that. So very important part of this uh, whole process and what my design in my head is, is this tubular webbing. It is one inch tubular webbing. Uh, this is extremely strong uh, product. Uh, this is, has a rating on it. It's well above any uh, purpose that I'm going to be using it for. Uh, I'm going to end up uh, determining what type length I need here. I will put an overhand knot in that. That's going to create an endless loop. Uh, once I have that endless loop, that will be my load bearing for my saddle. Uh, it's going to be separated with this canvas, which is going to hold it to uh, the right distance so that it can fit around me. Uh, and but this tubular webbing is going to create the strength that I'm going to be depending on. I would never want to depend on my sewing uh, or this fabric. I am going to sew the fabric to this, uh, but that's simply going to be holding that uh, at my desired distance so it can fit, fit around me. This uh, I'm confident is going to be the load bearing uh, part of the saddle. It's a very important part, and uh, I'm going to have an endless loop, and that's what I'm going to be putting my trust in. I would never trust uh, my choice of thread or the fabric uh, because I simply don't know what the weight bearing of that is. This tubular webbing I know can hold me. So if you can picture uh, like a swing type thing, that is a very important part. Uh, you can never be too safe. So lastly, uh, the last piece of the puzzle is this black diamond bod uh, rock climbing harness. It is absolutely one of the lightest and most minimalistic uh, climbing saddles that I can find. This ultimately is going to be uh, my safety source. I'm always going to be attached uh, with this as I'm in the saddle. Uh, so this would be my backup. And if 
uh, the tubular webbing for whatever reason would happen to fail. Uh, ultimately, I'm depending on this rock climbing harness and I will be within the specs uh, of using that. So when I DIY my saddle, uh, it will be coupled uh, with this rock climbing harness. I have and use uh, different rock climbing harnesses. I'm a big fan of those. Even in a tree stand, I use the X-Bend climbing harness. I've done a review on that. It has the built-in lineman's loops. They're metal, uh, but that has a little extra bulk, a little extra weight. I simply won't need that and use those features uh, with my own saddle here. So I chose to go with a super light option, uh, and this is the Black Diamond Bod. So the first step was to coming up with the dimensions. Uh, again, I simply did not know where to start. You can't exactly go online and find exact dimensions of a saddle or a DIY. Uh, instructions on what size to use. So I started uh, with a tape measure uh, using this belt, actually measure my backside. Uh, if you want, you can find somebody to measure it for you. Uh, might get a little awkward or uncomfortable. Uh, so you might want to do it yourself on second thought. Uh, but in all seriousness, I came up uh, with a paper pattern, uh, kind of held it there, thought this would be right. And now it's uh, traced it out here on my fabric. I'm going to cut it out uh, and then we'll go to the next step. This is what I came up with. Uh, it's a little bit of a football shape. I see some manufacturers using uh, at least this basic type shape. I have no idea how closely I got, but I feel this is going to uh, be a comfortable size. I wanted something that's going to be plenty enough. Uh, it feels like it's covering me totally, that I'm not constantly falling out of it. So my next step is I'm actually going to fold over these edges and give it a quick tack uh, with the sewing machine. Uh, looks aren't everything, but if I'm going to be doing it, I might as well at least uh, fold these over, give it a nice clean look there. Uh, it can't hurt. So there we go. That's what I came up with. A little bit of a cleaner look. Uh, by no means perfection. I am absolutely a self-taught uh, person with a sewing machine. Simply experimenting around until I learned enough uh, to make myself dangerous. I pity the poor person that stumbled upon this video because they saw a sewing machine. They're probably cringing if they know what they're doing uh, because honestly, I don't really, uh, but we're going to keep going. Uh, this is what I have so far. So my next step after I have uh, my saddle fabric cut out is to determine the length of my tubular webbing. Now I want to take this tubular webbing and again, this is going to be my frame, so to speak, or the strength in my saddle that I'm going to be uh, depending and putting my weight into. Uh, and this is going to be tied into an endless loop. Uh, but first I got to determine how long it is. Uh, I'm going to have um, some extra hanging out either side of the saddle because that's where my bridge is going to attach to. And those are going to, those loops are going to act as my lineman's uh, belt attachment as I'm uh, climbing. So uh, I'm just simply going to lay this tubular webbing around the edge uh, of this fabric that I have here. Uh, leave maybe six inch loops on the end of each uh, side of the saddle here and uh, determine what length. Remember, I got to leave enough to make a knot inside here, uh, but I'm not going to quite knot this together yet. I'm just going to leave an enough there that I have a knot and have the desired length with six inch loops around each side. This length uh, right here at my fingers is what I determined would be long enough. I'm going to be making my knot up here at this end, but before I want to do that, uh, I have to think ahead, uh, cut some pieces of rope, and I'm going to be sticking this rope inside of the tubular webbing, two pieces, uh, and those are going to act as uh, my frame to keep uh, my loops easier for my carabiners to hook onto. Uh, if you would just simply have this webbing uh, in the loops, it would be hard to hook the carabiner to. I'm hoping to put some rope inside of this tubular webbing. Uh, it's going to uh, form a little bit of a stiffer uh, place to put my carabiner. So I'm going to be using these, slipping them inside of the tubular webbing. Once those rope pieces are inside the tubular webbing, uh, you can just sort of slide them around and we're going to get them, fine tune them to the 
uh, proper place uh, ultimately, but then after they're inside, I'm ready to tie off uh, this tubular webbing. Uh, and then I can do my final placements of those rope as I slide them around right where I need those loops to be right before I uh, sew them onto my actual saddle material here. So once I have checked and double checked my measurements, I made my knot here. I have it laid out on the frame. I feel I have a good amount uh, on either side here. Uh, I think I'm ready to sew it onto the fabric, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, I want to make a way that I can attach this to this harness without actually sewing it. Uh, that way if it's a total failure or um, I simply don't want to use it all the time but yet want to use this climbing harness. My idea is just to use some lightweight paracord. Uh, I'm just going to sew in uh, a couple of loops and uh, have them sticking out the top of the harness. That way I can uh, fasten it with this paracord and tie it to uh, the loops up here on the rock climbing harness. Uh, that's the best idea I can come with, so I want to sandwich this paracord uh, at certain spots here along the top. Uh, that's going to give me an option to mount it, put it on, and take it off. Uh, again, this isn't going to be weight bearing, this is simply going to hold this harness in place. Uh, that way it's always, when I lean into it, it's never going to have slipped down. It's always going to ride exactly uh, where my rock climbing harness is. Uh, so I'm going to cut a couple of length of these and strategically place them so that it'll line up uh, with loops that I can fasten it to my rock climbing harness. So now comes the nerve wracking part. It's time to start sewing this together. There's no turning back and a mistake here will um, set me back right to the very beginning. So uh, I'm gonna start sewing here and I'll be back with you uh, and show you what I come up with. So this is the final product. I simply uh, sewed the tubular webbing the whole way around the circumference of this saddle material. I left the loops here on the end to serve as my bridge. My bridge is going to attach to those. I have uh, that rope in here to give it some stability to hook uh, my carabiner to. Uh, I have my paracord here and that's how I'm planning on attaching it to my rock climbing harness. Uh, you might ask about this unsightly knot right here. It looks kind of ugly and I would probably agree but uh, that knot serves an important purpose. I did not want to just sew this tubular webbing together and trust my sewing or the thread that I chose uh, with that knot. Remember, this is still an endless loop. All in all, if, if the fabric breaks, uh, if my sewing breaks, ultimately this endless loop is still what's going to be holding me. Uh, this fabric, if you can imagine, is just simply holding it at the desired position around me. Uh, so this knot serves a very important purpose and it keeps this an endless loop and that's what I'm putting my confidence in. Uh, another thought that I thought of and a concern that you might have or it might come up, I fully anticipate it coming up, is sewing this tubular webbing going to weaken it. Uh, that is a risk I'm taking. Uh, it quite possibly uh, reduces its strength somewhat. I feel that this tubular webbing is so overkill uh, in strength for what I would actually need. Uh, but that is a legitimate concern. Obviously, I'm confident that it's still going to be strong enough, uh, but that's simply me. Uh, you can never be too cautious, and, and that is a concern uh, you might have, and you have to consider that, whether uh, that is going to weaken it or not. That small needle, uh, like I said, I really don't think it will uh, to the point that it's going to be dangerous, uh, but keep that in mind. I'm happy with how this turned out. Uh, extremely lightweight. Uh, it really weighs next to nothing. It folds up. I mean, it, you can simply fold this up into a palm size uh, bundle. And like I said, it just weighs a few ounces. Uh, so I'm glad how it's turning out so far. The next step is going to figure out the exact uh, bridge length that I'm going to need. Uh, attach it to this rock climbing harness. For that, I'm going to take you outside. But before I do that, I have some uh, leftover fabric. I see some gear haulers that people use, a little cyst bags maybe, uh, attached to the side. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of them while I have the sewing machine set up here and then I'm going to take you out and uh, start experimenting and actually uh, putting this to work. Uh, it might be a complete failure, uh, but time will tell. Let's stick around. There's lots more to come. So I am out here in the woods. Uh, I have a tree here that I can start uh, practicing with and testing with, uh, but I do have my saddle attached to my rock climbing harness. Uh, I just simply tied it uh, onto the rock climbing harness with those paracords. Again, that's not weight bearing. It's just kind of hold that in place uh, where it needs to be. Uh, it fits on there uh, really nice. I ended up going with a tubular webbing uh, bridge. 
Uh, that's going to take some adjustment, I'm sure, to get the right length. Uh, I could have went with a rope, but I had some extra tubular webbing, and I'm going to give that a try at first. We'll do some experimenting, maybe end up with a rope, a rope bridge, but uh, for now, it will be a tubular webbing. I also ended up uh, sewing two gear haulers. I'm going to attach this uh, to either side of my saddle. Uh, these have uh, draw strings. I just used paracord and sewed uh, them in there that I can pull it tight. I actually have my uh, tether and lineman's rope in this one. This one I'm planning on just carrying some extra gear, uh, maybe my pull rope uh, and gear hanger for up in the tree, uh, some hooks. I'm going to keep in this one, so I'm going to attach these. I'm going to put my saddle on and attach these to either side of my saddle. Uh, then I'm going to start practicing uh, on a tree. What's the moment of truth? Uh, we're going to give it a try. I needed some sort of platform. I actually took an old uh, seat off of a, an old hang-on, steel hang-on that I had, uh, and fabricated this uh, little platform. Uh, so this is what I'm planning on starting out with. I also will be using uh, my Hawk Helium sticks uh, to get up the tree. Obviously, I'm just going to start at basically uh, ground level or just a foot or two off the ground here to uh, give it a whirl. Uh, but I'm going to attach my stick. I plan on having my stick and platform at about the same height. Uh, that way I have a platform to stand on and a stick I can help maneuver myself around the tree. That's my plan to climb the stick, have this position and my platform at the same height. Uh, and then I'm going to attach myself to the tree here and uh, give it a try. So here is my setup that I'm thinking of using. I have uh, my lineman's rope. I have a Wild Country Ropeman Ascender. Uh, this is a Ropeman 1. I have my tree tether that I'm planning on moving up with me. Uh, and here's the safety part of my system uh, to keep a tree tether going. And this is attached uh, to my rock climbing harness, uh, which is obviously rated. Uh, I'm going to use uh, my saddle to be hands free with this lineman's rope. But being attached with my tether and moving my tether along up with me and having that attached to my rock climbing harness ultimately gives me safety. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm counting on uh, in case of an emergency, in case something would happen. Uh, and ultimately, I'm going to be attaching my bridge uh, to another Wild Country Ropeman 1 ascender here. Uh, my bridge will attach to that once I get into uh, onto my platform here. Uh, so this is my simulated setup that I'm planning on using. I'm going to step up onto the stand here. Uh, obviously, it's only a foot and a half, two feet off the ground. Uh, but I want to stay low to first test it here. So I'm up onto the platform. I just simulated climbing the tree. I have my tether uh, attached as I was climbing up through. I have my uh, lineman's belt maybe should be a little bit tighter here. That's making me hands free. Now I'm ready to hook my bridge up into my tree tether here. This tree tether is still attached to my rock climbing harness and will remain that way. Uh, but I can reach up here and attach uh, my bridge. Close my gate. Uh, one last check to make sure everything's good. I should be able to uh, loosen now my uh, lineman's rope and uh, also my tether here, put my weight into the saddle. So tuck this back into my bag, out of the way, keep it quiet. So I'm officially uh, in the saddle. Uh, it feels pretty good. It gives me range of motion here. Uh, it feels like this webbing uh, rolls around pretty nice in the carabiner, uh, pretty smooth motion. Again, my tree tether uh, and my bridge now is supporting me, uh, but here I also have the tail end with a Prusik knot uh, attached to my rock climbing harness. So should my bridge fail or the saddle, uh, any portion of the saddle fail, uh, ultimately I'm still gonna be attached uh, with my rock climbing harness at all times, uh, so that is ultimately giving me confidence and the safety there needed, although I 
have full confidence here in my saddle. So, uh, so far, working out good. I'm going to continue to uh, hang out here, adjust for comfortability. Uh, maybe this bridge length has to be a little bit shorter or a little bit longer. I'm not sure, uh, but this so far is working out real well. Uh, obviously, uh, you can rest your knees against the tree. Uh, you can put your hip against the tree to uh, rest that way. Uh, definitely feels fine. It really does uh, feel comfortable. I'm, I'm convinced it'll work. Uh, just some fine tuning here, maybe uh, the height of my tether, but I'm going to continue to use it here uh, and do some fine tune adjusting, but I'm happy with how this is turning out. So thanks for hanging out with me here to the end, uh, quite literally. Uh, this was a fun build and I've actually been using this now for almost a month. I've been practicing on different size trees, uh, adjusting my bridge and my tether height. Many different adjustments you can do to make your saddle more comfortable. Uh, I've been using it to do some preseason scouting, hanging along the field edge and looking for deer. I've uh, been doing a little bit of groundhog hunting from up in a tree, uh, just a different perspective. One of my main concerns with using a saddle was myself filming. Uh, I have a camera arm and I film all my hunts. Uh, I did not want a saddle to complicate that and make it even more difficult because self-filming can be very difficult at times. Uh, it definitely adds uh, some challenges, but I've been trying to overcome that through this practice. Uh, things like just where do you want to place your camera arm, where to hang your bag that's going to be out of your way uh, for your shot angles, but yet uh, have your camera arm that you can maneuver around the tree. Uh, so I'm still learning with things like that. I'm definitely going to use my saddle here some this season. I'm not promising uh, by no means to use it on every hunt. I think a saddle is a great tool to use uh, along with climbers, hang on tree stands, uh, ladder stands, many different options. Uh, each situation calls for maybe a little different tool and now I have another tool for my toolbox. So thanks for following along, I appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I try and get back to each and every one of you if possible, so I do appreciate your support. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.